Now the 1980s can be best described as the golden age of the arcade machine where you had Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Xevious, Missile Command and a whole bunch of others that I cannot remember to count. In 1985, Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES in North America. It was a huge success and, with games like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, helped to revitalise the gaming industry after it crashed in 1983. Uh, loads of companies were releasing a ton of awful games onto the market, especially the Atari 2600, and um, consumers were just not interested in buying them because they were awful and there were far too many consoles to play them on effectively, and that led to uh, the crash of 1983 as it's known. It wasn't until uh, 1985 when the NES was released, Nintendo released the NES in American market and it rejuvenated the whole Will thing. Will you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? The one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Will you be the first to raise the incredible... In 1986, Sega released the Sega Master System, another video games console which competed directly against the NES. However, compared to the NES, releases were infrequent and the quality of games was inconsistent. Sega challenges you with the ultimate video game, the Sega Master System. Hang on, hang on! With more accurate control, more detailed graphics, more levels of play. Awesome! The Sega Master System comes with... In 1989, Sega released the Mega Drive, known as the Genesis in North America. It was a new console with graphics that far exceeded those of the NES and the Master System. Sega's ad campaign was very aggressive, boasting their superiority over Nintendo. You have just been invaded by Sega TV! <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Interactive TV! Brought to you live from a satellite on a caravan outside Buxton! Tonight, we bring you... Took me a loop. Do it. They ran a slogan called Genesis Does What Nintendo. Genesis Does! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis Does! 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis Does! Genesis Does! Genesis Does! Genesis Does! Genesis Does! Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo? In 1991, Sega released its first game featuring its soon-to-be mascot. Sonic the Hedgehog was a huge success, and due to the Mega Drive's superior technical specifications compared to the NES, Sega was gaining the upper hand. President of Hag. It's bad enough that Sega Genesis has the most 16-bit games, but this new Sonic the Hedgehog, oh, he really dust my doilies. They say he's incredibly fast. Well, what's the hurry, mister? Hmm? And about his attitude. Smarty pants. Why can't it be more like that nice boy, Mario? Oh! <laughs> Little brat! Sonic the Hedgehog, now included where you buy a Genesis system. In response to the Mega Drive, in 1992, Nintendo released the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SNES, and it had graphics that rivaled those of the Mega Drives. Words can't describe the endless challenge of Super Mario World, so we let the players do the talking. Super Mario World is here. It's one of the new generation of Nintendo games. It comes only with Super Nintendo, and it's like nothing you've ever faced. Now you're playing with power. Super power. With the success of the SNES, Sega realized that they needed something to get back on top of Nintendo. Sega released two add-ons for the Sega Mega Drive, which increased its graphical capabilities. The Sega CD in 1993, and the Sega 32X in 1994. Now, the Sega Mega Drive add-ons were a joke, even back when they were first released. I don't recall anybody in my family ever owning any of the stupid add-ons for the Sega Mega Drive, simply because they weren't necessary, and that's why they completely failed. Nintendo, by the mid-1990s, were giving Sega a right pasting, and the Mega Drive, uh, the sales were declining. It did well, 
but Nintendo was the clear winner out of the two by far in terms of sales figures. So what Sega did in trying in trying to win some of the affection back from some Nintendo people from Nintendo uh, was they released these two add-ons. One of them was the Sega 32X and the other one was the Sega CD. Now don't get me wrong, there were some classic games released for the system like uh, Sonic CD, that's probably the most famous example that's uh, still loved by Sega fans to this very day. But games like that were very few and far between from either system. There was less than a, probably about a handful of games that were worth owning for either of them and they were ridiculously expensive and they didn't work on their own merits. In 1995, a new competitor entered the console market Sony found instant success with the PlayStation, and business for Sega was worse than ever, who released the far less successful Sega Saturn the same year. Now there's no question in my eyes that Sony PlayStation did to the gaming industry as the NES did back in the 80s. It completely rejuvenated and made people reassess what the gaming industry was all about. Pocketed as the adult console where a lot more adult oriented games could be released on the system because Sony allowed that. And it, it was the first, I suppose, cool console with the media, not just with gaming media. Uh, but with television and radio and film industries were starting to take notice of it, the potential of this machine uh, with its use of CGI graphics and stuff like that. It was, it was revolutionary at the time. Nintendo released the Nintendo 64 in 1996 and found modest success, leaving the Sega Saturn in last place. Determined to get ahead of the competition, Sega released a new console in 1999, far earlier than any of its competitors. The Sega Dreamcast was far ahead of its time, and was the first console to feature online gaming. Despite being initially very successful, sales of the Dreamcast plummeted in 2000 with the release of the PlayStation 2, which had a DVD player. And with Nintendo's GameCube and new competitor Microsoft's Xbox on the horizon, Sega couldn't keep up with the competition, and the Dreamcast was discontinued. Now looking back at the period, I don't think there's anything Sega could have realistically done to reverse the fortunes of its ailing console business, simply because the Sega Dreamcast was released far too late uh, and there wasn't enough room for a third console on the market. Nintendo's machine and Sony's machine had the lion's share of the market and uh, Sega only had the scraps of its uh, remaining uh, hardcore fan base to support it and it, it just, just wasn't enough and by the early 2000s Sega decided to pull the plug on the machine which is a real shame because even though the console itself was fantastic it was a powerful little machine for its day and it had some classic games released for it uh, some cult for like Soul Calibur and uh, Sonic Adventure 2 and a whole bunch of others of the Power Stone series. It, um, it just wasn't enough to sustain Sega's, uh, Sega's market share and they decided to go third party. Mm -hmm.